wondered if he could indeed govern as a Democrat if elected. Mike to work for and with him. He really has come like 360 degrees from the military. Yeah. The law, what does the law say, you know, and all of that. I have to remind him it's confident that that's a position, he, he goes ahead with it. So he's very open, very people. And partly because he was head of a military regime, he has become ex You know, when I was military head of state, I was young, I was... His need to be seen to be fair, even-handed and democratic. more than qualified to lead Nigeria at this point. To face the 21st century, this is why I stopped. Certainly and uh, questionable. If there's one person that I know truly we go either for Council of States or we have opportunity of meeting with him. We have never As everybody to make it. Yes, everybody should contribute. This is how much we made this year. This is how much we made this. Love Nigeria. It is President Mohamed Buhari. Democratic? <laughs> he did. He wrote down, informed the national... ...of our governors, who went travelling, would rather hand over to a, an essay I don't think I doubt it in any form. We all know that since he came in, he's actually been on his medicals, he had to hand over to the vice president for a period.
I don't know what else I need to do to show democratic credentials. I think. Have a, a system where you have the judiciary, the National Assembly, and the executive. That's why they, at times the, the war appears slow. So I think in terms of democratic credentials, I believe that like uh, he's done well and continues to do well. Not a scintilla of doubt about Nigeria to where Nigeria deserves to be. Yeah. These are difficult times, we know. They are difficult. President Buhari is a complete Democrat. My with him for over two years before election, and I know he has been president two years now. I have been watching his programs. I have been watching what he has been doing. And there is no sign that President Buhari had even ever been a military man. The minute I got to know him, that was the first thing I noticed. He's a complete Democrat in everything he does. Fantastic man. I've heard people say he hasn't quite uh, imbibed democratic tenets, and I find that very strange. If anybody's going to accuse him about anything, is that he's not sufficiently authoritarian. Once you have your job cut out for you. Or once he delegates, in my case, my job is cut out for me. He, would say, he says it, and he has said it so often. Is it against the party constitution? Or is it against whatever I'm doing, against the national, uh, national constitution? Once he is assured that you follow the rules as laid down, that is the end of the matter. A man who delegates is a man who respects the rule of law to the last detail. I think people make assumptions of the fact that because he's a military general that he will not be bound by norms, um, democratic norms. The country has enjoyed, coming this far, the healthiest relationship between the three arms of government. And you remember that from the beginning, you know, those crises in the National Assembly actually were arising from the fact that the president had refused to point at President of Senate and Speaker. The President said, no, no, no. Let them go and choose who they want to lead them. So he is not dictatorial. He doesn't impose on view, on people, on institutions, his own views. He allows them to operate in line with the laws of the constitution of the country. That military thing is not negative. That military thing of discipline, integrity, uh, keeping to time, you know, doing things the right way is not negative. But the military in terms of being dictatorial, being, uh, doing things alone, he can't even afford to. It's a democracy. And that is why he will always ask you, tell me what the law says. Let me read what the law says before I take the decision. So when you say military, it's not all negative. The discipline is there. You know, this is a man of integrity. This is a man who will not, you know, Still, Nigeria's money. If a leader leads the way, others will follow. So, when you say military, I, I think what the ideas of being disciplined, doing things the right way, you know, is it's very positive. However, the idea of being dictatorial is what people talk about, which he doesn't have. So, really, I, I think it's done well in terms of being a democratic president. No, no, no. I, I never had any doubts. You see, watching closely during the campaign, I could see him living up to his declaration that he was now a born-again Democrat, as he himself said. You know, I actually find him very interesting. I've sat with him and uh, asked him questions that um, some people would feel was um, uncomfortable questions. I've asked him questions about Sharia. I've asked him questions about some of his uh, military colleagues and what had happened. For example, I asked him questions about um, his relationship with um, Jeraba Bangida. You know, yeah. in a very um, a relaxed atmosphere. And he answered 
every single one of those questions. And he wasn't for a moment. He wasn't uh, rattled or upset or anything. He answered all the questions. And no, I don't think he still has that uh, military temper. The president is someone who, first of all, believes in the competence of many of those who work around him. And uh, in, in my case, I think I've enjoyed, you know, very special favor from, from him. He believes that I am capable, <laughs> that I can do the work. I think he, generally speaking, uh, would ask me to perform certain uh, functions, aside from the constitutional functions that I perform. I've never known him to like be second guessing on those kinds of things. No, yeah. what he usually would do is, you know, expect that the whatever it is will be performed within a given period of time. And I generally update him on practically everything that I'm doing. He thinks on appointing you that you have the capacity to do the work. He tells you, call me when you have a problem. If you have a major challenge, tell him. He'll find you the means. That's the way he works. He doesn't trouble you. He doesn't request anything from you. He doesn't bother you, but Go do your job. Now, if you can't, he may tolerate a few mistakes. The next thing is to say, well, sorry. Absolutely not. In fact, I also recall my very first uh, briefing with the president when he made me SSA diaspora. And I outlined, you know, what I think should be done. By the time I was through, he said, well, you know what to do. That's why I made you my advice on diaspora. So I expect you to do what you have to do. And since then, I don't have to seek permission to take action, you know, because he believes in you, he has delegated. If you do something wrong, he's going to even tell you off in a very funny way. <laughs> you know, so he does not interfere. He's giving you a job, he expects you to do your job. If there are challenges, of course, you have to see him and seek his permission before them. But in the course of doing your normal duty, he really doesn't interfere. He expects results. Since I took office, one of the things he expressed interest in pursuing was the completion and repairs of Ilorin Jeba Mokwa Road and the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And he understood it very clearly from his days as president and also from his days as PTF chairman that that was a major transport artery for Nigeria. So he told me that he wanted me to pay attention to that. He also told me to advise him on how we could quickly complete the Lagos Ibadan Express Road. That it had taken too long and it was a critical part of the Lagos port. And then he said to me that the second Niger Bridge was a priority for, for him as part of our transport. Beyond that, he has exerted no pressure on my ministry. Yes. But what I have done from time to time, of course, is periodically to seek to meet with him, either to brief him on some of these things he asked me to specifically pay attention to and the progress that was being made. Yeah. Or in some cases, whenever I had to go and represent the country, I was going out either to meetings in the Shelter Africa or the meetings on the Abidjan Lagos corridor. And I sensed that there was a possibility of any topical issue in my ministry that may come up. I make sure I see him, yes. tell him that this matter might come up while I'm away. These are the solutions I have put in place. And other than that, really and truly, you just deal with issues at cabinet level when they come, if I have memos. But essentially, he expects you to go and run your ministry. Well, first, let me say that as a leader, he's somebody that wants to work um, with people who, like you said, you delegate to them and they carry out their assignments and they come back. So he's not a micromanager, if that's your question. Certainly. To the extent I've worked with micromanagers, I think you'll be hard pressed to call President Buhari a micromanager. Secondly, he's also a very visionary leader in the sense that he knows where he's going. So if you look at his vision for the country, you know, peace and security, the war against corruption, and rebuild the economy mm -hmm. and diversify the economy, he's been very consistent. He stayed with that message. So there's no lack of clarity on where he thinks we should go. And then finally, I will also say that in terms of just prioritizing, he was very clear on how to you know, deal with the issue of security and has done it extremely well. He was very clear on the fact that he hates corruption with a passion. In fact, he made the famous expression, we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill us. And you can see that even the responses have been such that like, clearly it's not business as usual. 
And then I would say from the point of view of the economy, which I've been very actively involved in, he certainly has supported the policies we've come up with. You know, I think, you know, he provides leadership and Nigeria needs leadership. We don't lack for people who are competent, who have the capacity to work, but we need purposeful, visionary leadership. And I think that's what the president provides. It's right for people to say, yes, it delegates, but there's nothing bad in delegation. You don't want to sit on them and micromanage every step of the way what they do. So I don't think it's wrong to, to delegate, particularly when abdication does not come with that delegation. And with him, he does not abdicate. So he, he is not a micromanager. He is not a break down your neck type uh, president, he lets you act. Someone who believes a lot in the people who work for him and with him, and he gives them a lot of latitude. And he also has a vice president who is more on the details side of things. So it's, it's a very complementary relationship that they've managed to, to forge, which the ministers working with them also understand to be the case. And, and, and that's been quite effective. He is a very upright man, deeply religious, incorruptible, and pleasant. Despite the fact that you don't see him smiling all over the place, but if you are one-on-one -on -one with him, you will see the pleasantness. You know, he is a pleasant, he has a pleasant personality, and he is very kind. His major strength is his integrity. If the man tells you something, you can take it to the bank. Another strength will be the fact that he values loyalty. He values loyalty. If you have shown him loyalty for life, he stands by you, unless you, you show yourself unworthy. If you see the kind of puritanical life the president lives, you cannot but say he is the mas master of integrity. His motive, his objectives, his ways of doing things, his sincerity of purpose is not in doubt to every home, to every individual. That is why he is a man of the people and the people will continue to support him. Where is the cleanest person I've worked with. I'm not sentimental. I studied him and I saw in him quality. Patriotism. I was commissioner of education before River State. So it was 79. Before I became Minister of Petroleum on the board, 18, 18 January 1984 to 86. He's not corrupt. He's very clean, transparent, reliable, hardworking. I think his major strength is his character. Number one, I mean this is a man who is very disciplined. And then the his determination to deal with Corruption in Nigeria is something that we all should just key into. You know, he's very disciplined, he's a man of integrity. I know when he talks about how uh, funds have been siphoned, you see the pain. You can't believe that anybody will do that. You can't even believe that those who do that are normal human beings because are you going to sleep in two houses at the same time? And there was a time he was talking about this corruption and he said, you know what? A lot of them will not even know what they have stolen. They can't even know what they have stolen. I know, so with that in his mind, he's determined that he must tackle the twin issue of corruption. And one thing we know that he himself is not corrupt. His number one strength, I think, is his integrity. He is perhaps one of the most honest men I know in my entire life, particularly in public service. Uh, his second strength is his sense of social justice. He always tries to be fair. He tries to look at everyone and tries to hear you out. He never rushes to judgment. You report the activities of an official. He doesn't rush to suspend the official or fire him. He asks for evidence. He asks for proof. And he has to see the proof once, twice, thrice before he acts because he is so worried about being unjust to anyone that sometimes it takes him time before he takes decisions, but he does in the end. That's his second strength. I think his third strength is, you know, a sense of, 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 of vision where to take the country. As someone who was orphaned and from a very poor family, 
he has seen how Nigeria has been kind to him. A Nigeria that was kind to everyone, that gave people equal opportunities to realize their full potentials. And one of the things that bothers him, that makes him lament in our private conversations, is how Nigeria has changed. How a person of his background no longer has the level playing field and the opportunities he had. He repeatedly told us this story about how in his final year of secondary school there was a competition conducted by Elder Dempster Shipping Lines across Nigeria to take four Nigerians to Liverpool by ship. And he was in the same class as Sheo Eradua, whose father was federal minister in charge of Lagos Affairs, equivalent of FCT then, and Isa Keta, the education minister of the northern region. Two were his classmates, yet he was selected to go to London instead of them. She said, today it's impossible for the son of the minister of education or the son of the minister of FCT to be in your class and anyone is going to be selected for something like that mm. and it will not be one of them. He said, Nigeria has changed and not for the better. And one of the things that he would want to do is to bring back that level playing field, mm. uh, equal opportunity for everyone, including the poorest of the poor to Nigeria. Obviously his personal integrity, you know, uh, is a real strength because I think that's what has made him who he is, you know, he doesn't compromise, you know, and he's really somebody of real integrity, personal integrity. Another strength is discipline, is personal discipline. When we go on trips, you know, and you go into these long meetings, you know, especially like conferences, and what you find is that most of the leaders, they will just speak, get up, and you know, not listen to the others, and go and have side events and so forth, you know. And it tends to be about them, you know. But he will sit down for hours, and he will not move. He will not get up and listen to everybody. And I remember, you know, the very first um, such meeting, I conference I attended with him. <laughs> I, I didn't know this about him, and so some of the people were saying, "Oh, I should go and tell him that." there was a delegation that wanted to meet with him. You know, so I went innocently to tell him that, uh, oh, you know, if we could uh, leave, because he had already spoken uh, to meet with um, this other delegation. And he was not best amused, you know. Uh, he said to me, no, he's not going anywhere. He's going to sit down and, you know, listen to the others out of courtesy mm. and, uh, and everything else. Mm. And, um, you know, you see all the other presidents getting up, five minutes, go there, come back, go there. But he has that amazing discipline, you know, and, and respect for, for other speakers, which is um, a, a really admirable uh, quality. He has a good sense of humor. Uh, I believe personally that is easily approachable. And when you do that, you find that you are talking to a man with a good sense of humor with a sense of history and patriotism in him. One is to say yes, he's one of the personally most upright human beings I have ever come across. And that is why from day one, I have supported his ambition to govern this country. If I was in Benin when I first heard, the very first time around that uh, he's interested in the presidency, and I went all the way from Benin to Kaduna to say this thing I'm hearing, is it true? I hope it is true, and uh, it turned out uh, to be true, and I think we worked together from then on. The younger generation can't help but admire the humility, the resilience, and the depth of character of the man's persona. His image as a myth is obviously related to his position as a leader as well as a politician. Mm -hmm. The masses of the people see in Buhari a messiah and in him they see someone who not only stands for the truth but once he stands the truth itself will also stand. 
Obviously, this is a mystical interpretation of someone's personality. He has a splendid integrity. He's very patriotic. You know, when you have passion for anything you do, then it carries you through. I believe his passion for wanting Nigeria to do the right line, his uprightness, we can shave it off in all the things he's done. And his patriotism is not questionable. Self-discipline. The president has control over self. And he is able to conquer a lot of these elements that drive human beings. The president doesn't aspire to money. He's not moved by it. He doesn't aspire to ownership of homes, buildings. He doesn't aspire to ownership of cars. So all these things that are attractive to most people, they don't just give him the kick. So this is why he's able to control himself and drive the war against corruption. You see, the president, I think that people tend to think that he has, that he has certain very fixed views on everything. No, that's not the case. He's the sort of person who engages on practically every topic, on every subject. And he's willing to hear uh, what the arguments are, state his own point of view, you know, and he modify his views as necessary. I have never found him to be rigid, uh, to be completely rigid and unbending in that way, you know, except of course on matters of principle. And really you can't, I, I can't fault anyone who, who on matters of principle says, well, this is where I stand on this, this is where I stand on that. And I think that generally speaking, he tends to be that sort of person. He's just not the sort of person who you find it difficult, you find difficult to argue with or express your view and all that. Yes, I believe he received counsel. I am not in a position to, for example, give him counsel. I know that he received counsel simply because before the elections, when we used to work and have meetings in his office, trying to package how he becomes the president of Nigeria, he used to attend those meetings with us. He sits at the head of the table, but he lets everybody give his ideas. You know, that is somebody who is willing to listen. He hardly says anything and he hardly contradicts anybody, except if he has another view, then he will say, if you do this, would it not be better? So he receives counsel, he listens. President Buhari actually listens more than talks. He does, yeah. He, he's very, very open. And in fact, you know, I remember um, one particular incident uh, 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 like this, a major meeting we attended on, um, it was fundraising actually, for another country, the International Donors Conference, and almost every country there were making pledges and things. And naturally, you know, he felt that um, there's no point being there without making a pledge and was inclined to, you know. And I just whispered that, you know, we didn't really need to, that the organizers understood that Nigeria was going through very difficult times and so forth, and that maybe, you know, we need not uh, 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 do so. And, you know, he reflected a while and, and you know, he, he accepted that, although initially he was inclined to, you know. So he, he's, he, he does, um, you know, um, if you can convince him. He's open to, to entertaining divergent and disagreeing views. I've had private discussions with him, expressing disagreement with some of the positions he has taken in public. Yeah. And he has said, well, those were his views. And that now listening to me, he thinks that, well, I might be right. So disagreement is not his. It's not the same with President Buhari. He is the first to tell you that I am not going to do anything unless I understand it. So that's a man who wants to hear from you. And he will tell you, if, if you bring anything to me, I don't understand. If you don't explain it properly, I won't approve it. I need to understand it. So that's not a man who has a preconceived position that is cast in any stone. That much, at least from my interactions, I can say to you. And I think that many of my colleagues, if not all of them, will confirm this disposition. Maybe people don't know. Indeed, it is the lack of it that we probably make you not to be qualified.
to have that managerial skill. I pray to God that God should give me that, that uh, enablement, that patience. Because you will see President Mohammed Buhari taking it all, everybody allowing you to flow. When everybody have now spoken, he will be in a position to, to look at what A, B, C, D, E, F, G have said. And he will now just maybe speak to you. Things. Is that patience? It's not that lack of manager or anything, no. If it's a lack of manager, it's, it's somebody that maybe is clueless when they do anything, doesn't even know what to say. When you listen to him, everybody has spoken. And what he will just say, ah, everybody will be shocked. That, wait a minute, he's taking note of each and what every one of us is saying. It's different from maybe somebody that, number one, maybe you are not even allowed to say anything. And when they want to say it, they have, just, they have not just be any substance in what they're saying. No. Look at this Paris club. I've used a very good example that everybody, everybody is now bet for it. Look at the bailout that he first did when we came. Look at the loan restructuring when he came. You know what? He listened to everybody. He now said, ah, there's a problem. If what all of you, this governor, are telling me is true, then there's a problem. That you cannot pay salary, you cannot do this, that is something. Out of 36, about 31, 32 cannot pay salary, 31. Then there's a problem. Then there must be a way out. They will ask Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, uh, finance, look at what we can do for the governors. Governors, go and think what we think we can do. So that's how the first bailout came into being. Maybe we do, he did about three things immediately. Bailout, that was the first one. They restructured all the loans of all the states, all without exception. They restructured all our loans. They changed the, the rates, the interest rate they were collecting. They reduced it to single digit. It has never happened before. Not only that, they now said infrastructural development facility. They gave all the states in Nigeria equal amount to say, okay, at least this infrastructural deficit that we have, go and begin to fix it. We know it will not, 10 billion will not finish it. So it is only somebody that has that managerial acumen, managerial ability, and the patience to take everything in and come up with what I call a masterpiece. Some presidents were here when oil prices were about 100. Then somebody came when it was nosedive to 20 something, 29. Then you know the difference is there. A president, Muhammad Buhari, may not probably, we may not say, oh yes, this is excellent. No, because even to President Muhammad Buhari himself, he knows where he wants to be. But clearly, I mean, people will give him credit for what he has done. He has gone beyond passing, beyond even credit. He's moving between credit and good because of where Nigeria is. But if you are going to situate what is happening before, in fact, you give him excellence. Having had a little bit of knowledge of management, we know you can have, you have autocratic management, you have democratic management, and you have the less of a kind of management. But this man, the Buhari we are talking about, the president of this country, he brings in the democratic style of management. His style of management is leadership-based, transparent. It's quite transparent. And he believes in accountability. So, but don't forget, his leadership style is democratic. Since he became president, I have been watching. And since it is my party that is in the presidency, I noticed, since I don't work with him directly, that he has given a free hand to all his appointees, his ministers, uh, his chairman of uh, Boats and Parastatals, including the ministry who he is supposed to be in charge, the Minister of Petroleum, uh, the Minister of Petroleum. Even that, he has virtually handed the responsibility to the Minister of State, who reports to him. So I think it is a most democratic style of governance. I think it's this genuine love for, for the country. I think that's something that always appears to be I mean, love for the country and for people, especially the people. It's something that I don't think is expressed enough. I mean, he's a quiet, reserved person, but he's also someone who has a great love for the country. You know, and then he's concerned for the man on the street. And that's something that I don't think is um, expressed enough. 
he's very, 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 very concerned about the way that people suffer. And he always reminds us, and he always reminds me that, look, maybe you don't understand because you are, you've been in the private practice, in private practices. And I said, look, I've always earned a salary. There's no, there's nothing I've done in my life beyond earning a salary. I earn yeah. a salary every month. Yeah. And for that reason, I understand when people are not paid. I understand when, when people are owed money, when they're not paid, or when people have no money at all. I understand it. And he does. He understands it. I don't think that that's expressed enough. I don't think it's well known enough. He came to my mother's room and he said, look, I have nothing. I have nothing for you. And if you want to study, study hard and make it because this is what I have for you, your education. So you better buckle up and study hard and make it. And since then, I still have his image, you know, just standing by the wall and telling us that, and I realized how lucky I am because in this society that we're in, I wonder how many fathers would tell their, would tell their children that he's a very realistic father this is reality. He, he, he is showing us reality. And he always talks to us about the leaders that passed away without leaving anything behind. And it didn't stop their children from making it. It particularly pains me when I hear people calling names and say all sorts of things that are unkind. If you should be kind towards any man, please be kind towards President Wari. Because he's actuated by love for the country. And he loves human beings. He loves his family, he loves his friends, he loves Nigerians. So when I hear all those unkind things said about him, I feel bad. I think it's to know how fair-minded he is and how broad-minded he is. Because the assumption, very often, is that, oh, he's very partial on a religious basis or on an ethnic basis, you know, and, um, and that's not the case at all. I first saw this when um, there was a big issue that he has got Nigeria into the Islamic alliance uh, without consulting or anything. And we went together to Saudi Arabia and I remember they wanted a communique written and I went to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Saudi Arabia and they gave me this communique and I was a bit you know concerned about certain things including the fact that they had it had it was stated categorically mm -hmm. that Nigeria was a member of the Islamic Alliance. I brought this you know to his attention and um, you know and, and looked at it and and you know he understood and appreciated yes. that it, we had not formally joined or anything like mm -hmm. that and that it would not be accurate you know to put that and he supported me in making that correction and everything. But back home, right. everybody assumed that, oh, you know, he had forced Nigeria uh, into this and, uh, 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 and so on and so forth. And so when discussing with him some of those experiences, you realize and you see that um, he really is somebody who is not as parochial mm -hmm. as, uh, as, you know, as people you know, think. Well, there was a day I was speaking with the president, and um, he's always relaxed and down to earth, and you always have a good conversation. I mean, you will know if, if, he, if he doesn't want to carry on a topic, yeah. but you will know when he wants to carry on with a topic, <laughs> you know? And, you know, had a good conversation, laughing, and then, you know, I said, Mr. President, you know what? I will want Nigerians to see you the way I see you. I'm privileged to sit in front of you. I want them to see you the way I see you. So that is the gap that needs to be... Um, uh, Field. And it's not him that would do it, it's all of us. I just want Nigerians to know that he is a good man. And I believe that, you know, uh, Almighty Allah will make it possible for him to fulfill his dream and vision for Nigeria. But we all have to work with him to make that happen. I'd like them to know that he is extremely troubled by the suffering we went through, or we are still going through, or getting out of the recession. And he wants to end the terrible cycle of corruption that doesn't then allow us to grow because a lot is lost. One of the fastest and best things he did was the TSA. It's been extremely difficult for anybody to access loose funds now and play with, because everything is electronic and you can't enter the treasury anymore and tick. He's also very concerned about security, because what's the point? 
if anybody can seize any territory of Nigeria and become king and lord over that territory, well, then there is no country. And I think he would like to see a country greater, better than what we have. And he knows that we have a big future. And that Africa looks up to Nigeria. And we are more than half the population of West Africa. West Africa is 375 million. We're almost 200 million. We have capacity to feed Africa. We are showing it now. We have capacity for industrial growth. We have capacity in human resource to meet virtually any challenge. What is tying us down? Lack of discipline and organization. And above all, the youth. We were in Oweri during the campaigns and I was with him in the vehicle. And there was a lot of traffic, you know, very congested streets. And he said to me, what's happened? Why, why is it so congested here? And I said, well, everybody has moved from the villages to Oweri. I said, but well, that's terrible. So why? Because there's no life in the village. I said, but what do we do about that? I said, sir, if we win, we have to take life back to the village. And he said, that's, that's a good idea. That's where this whole idea of small-scale industry is going down and down. We buy machines now and sell to young people at, to people at almost half price. Because for many young people, it's very difficult to open an LC, go to the port, get a loan. We bring and give them. It's our country. So that is what I think. Now, some people know that he is very, very concerned. But there are those who say, no, uh, we don't like him. He has spoiled business. He's interfering with our way of life. Things were easier. There are those who choose to use the recession as an excuse to hate him. But South Africa has just gone into recession. Venezuela, in disaster. People cross the bridge to Colombia to buy bread. People give their children off to orphanages that they can't feed them anymore. They have more oil than we have. They too were hit by the oil crisis. Somehow we manage not to get too far down. And we are climbing back. So I think Nigerians should give him a chance. And I think we'll get through. I think we're heading there. Especially now that we learned that oil and gas shouldn't be relied upon. The days are coming when this country's prosperity will reach everyone. We have a duty to God and man to make Nigeria work. Especially for the younger generation to say, I love my country. I can die for my country. They haven't, they're not able to say that yet because they are in stress. I think the one thing that he probably has not sufficiently got across, he has said so in many words, mm -hmm. is how deeply touched he is by the army of young people who are seeking opportunities for employment. That is something that really, really touches him. That is something that I know that if there was a magic wand, rather than a long building process such as this, yes. that he would reach for that magic wand. That's something he hasn't communicated sufficiently. And I think that he's alluded to it because I was once in a bus with him during the campaign, and I think the vice president also, when he said to him, what are we going to do? How are we going to get these young people to work? Even during the campaign, it was an issue for him. And you, you have to understand the president that you have. He's not a man of many words. And so sometimes you need to patiently listen to the few that he has to say in order then to dimension the extent he intended to to cover. In fact, the president is entertained greatly by his grandchildren. He likes them around himself. The president watches television a lot. He reads newspapers a lot. And he also spends time in the garden. He likes nature a lot. I want Nigerians to know that this man does not want anything for himself. This man simply wants to see Nigeria work properly, develop as a leading country in Africa and one of the leading countries in the world. That's why he's fighting corruption. He has now managed to take away insecurity in the country. So I want Nigerians to know that he has sincerity of purpose. It is difficult for one for a country to have a president that have sincerity of purpose, who does not want anything. He has been putting all his energy to see that 
everything goes well in Nigeria. So I want Nigerians to believe in him, to believe that he wants what is best for this country. If you look at all the photographs of myself and so you see he is able to crack a joke with a straight face, mm -hmm. you know. So you will be the one laughing at if something is wrong. And you keep a straight face, you know. He is able to he has all manner of jokes. And he really he has a great sense of humor. You would not believe that he is, you know, because he just has an endless uh, string of jokes and things like that. So you you you'll be laughing and people will wonder, why is this <laughs> why is this fellow laughing like this? He really does have a very, very interesting mm -hmm. sense of humor. People see him as this stern, serious mm -hmm. person, and, and he's, he's very much an introvert. So he doesn't get to relax with people quickly. But once he is relaxed with you, and you are with him, you'll, you, you, he will be cracking jokes, you'll be laughing and rolling on the floor. Of course, we can't roll on the floor now. He's president. We have to behave ourselves. Mm -hmm. But in those days when we were in opposition, yeah. it's always a pleasure to go to his living room and talk and then he would start cracking his jokes and, you know, mm -hmm. you, 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 you laugh your heart out. Mm -hmm. He has a great sense of humor, but only when he's relaxed with you, mm -hmm. when he is comfortable in his skin with you, mm -hmm. uh, when he's meeting you for the first time or second time, he's a bit... Uh, he, he's a bit of an introvert, but once he relaxes and, you know, he's, he, he's really quite funny. I know it's difficult for people to conceptualize, but trust me, he is, President Buhari is, is very funny. Not very many Nigerians know that he is actually a very, very funny man. The president has a repertoire of jokes and proverbs and um, stories about his experiences in Congo, in the military, as Minister of Petroleum. And if he is relaxed and he is comfortable with you, he, he, he engages. Nigerians don't often believe that. That's the truth. He, a very funny man. He can laugh at himself. He picks up the, 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 the newspaper and uh, during the campaign particularly, he'll say, ah, have you seen the cartoon in, 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 in Daily Trust, what they said about me this morning? And he will, <laughs> he will repeat it and laugh over it. So he is, he's an immensely jovial uh, personality. I, I, I can't, so many, for me, is a uh, hard diaspora. <laughs> and then he'll say, always joke about, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to leave you behind with your people. You know, a lot of things. That, but there's a classic one, which I'll never forget. Um, there's this lady, one of us, and a family friend of the Buhari's, Joy. I mean, Joy walks into a room where Mr. President, and Mr. President said, hey, Joy, you're wearing a wig. Uh, she said, Mr. President, how do you know I'm wearing a wig? He said, uh, don't I see them? When it's scratching them, they do like this. <laughs> so you see... The president, why that you think he's, he's, he's you know, uh, hard and stiff and all that, he's noticing that even women, you, he knows how you scratch your head when you have on a wig. <laughs> he's a very fair person. <laughs> and of course, legendary humor. <laughs> well, that day we were going to the Republic. And in the morning, I was in the native dress and I put on a cap. When he got out of his house and saw me, he said, Oh, this cup is too big. <laughs> and then there was another day, I put on a small cup. When he saw me, he said, This cup is too small. <laughs> so he notices everything. His personal photographer, Bayo. Bayo is of the younger generation. His trousers would not touch, he would not cover his shoe. Therefore, you see the socks he's wearing. Mm -hmm. And it's this multicolor type that young generation likes. So one day, Bayo strode in and he was wearing a one color socks. President said, I had the multicolor socks. <laughs> so it shows me that he notices everything. He notices everything. The president has uh, this thing that most Nigerian leaders don't have, as you said yourself, a sense of humor. But the president, if you notice with him, in fact, he is one who deprecates himself. He comes into a meeting and he doesn't like it icy. He likes to break that ice and, and, then, and then warm up the place with humor. Do I have uh, experience? Yes, of course. Uh, I remember on myself there was a day 
it was raining outside and i i wear my agbada stashed and and the president said was well, so let, let's see how you go out there so he had no difficulty himself walking into the rain and he he knew that of course when you get drenched in a stashed cloth you are messed up and, and he looked at me he said well let's see how you go out there in the rain and you know that's that's the kind of president we have you remember the day he got up in his speech and said people call me baba go sleep how can you you can't have somebody better than that who is ready to accept a laugh a fun poking fun at himself and the one good passion that both of us share is that he loves cartoons i don't have us too many interaction with him mm -hmm. but i hear him say things that you like i remember that um, uh, when he was talking about um, an occasion of a political rally and said people brought money there and they were spending money you know he said and they spent so much dollars that dollars became devalued. You know, I mean, he, he, you know, I mean, it was the first time I was hearing someone talking about devaluation of currency, you know, in that manner. So I think people who say he has a great sense of humor actually know what they are talking about. My prayers every day, at least five times a day, was thanking God that um, he allowed people to understand and believe me. This goodwill that I enjoy from the masses is what is keeping me in politics. And of course, my central objective to provide transparent and accountable government. As a physiology, I know how important it is. The grant you're asking for looks like a drop from what you're planning. I need equipment. Equipment? There's any equipment. I'm okay. I'm very happy. <laughs> why, why would I give you 10 million naira that I can I empower like five other youths with and they will make money? I will now give you money to go and do research. What have you done in the last three years? We, we want to implement aggressive sales now. I suggest. Can we make a deal? Okay. 